for a copy of the treaty. I went to the UN Documentation Centre and said, right, I want the current draft of a negotiating text. And they looked at me as though they were baffled. You know, the librarian there who had stacks of papers behind her in various languages, she just looked as though she'd never heard of me. So I insisted, and it took about 10 minutes, and they consulted each other, and there were three or four of them arguing over it. None of them would produce the document. So I then did a quick interview with a passing TV camera and came back to the attack, and I said, look, I know this treaty exists because this is what the conference is all about. It's discussing a treaty draft. And they said, oh, no, we've got no such thing. And I said, well, you have, and I want it, and I'm not going to be put off. And if I am put off, there will be an international diplomatic incident. And only then did they produce a stack of papers two inches thick, a thousand pages, most of which was just complete irrelevant. But right at the bottom of the stack, when I plowed my way through it, I found hidden the draft or the current draft of the treaty. And once again, they are desperately trying to conceal from everybody here the magnitude of what they're attempting to do. They really are aiming to set up a world government. They no longer use the word government in the treaty. I think we've frightened them off that. But all the institutions of this world government and the enormous powers it's going to be given over free markets to tax the American economy to the extent of 2% of GDP, to impose a further tax of 2% on every financial transaction, and that could come to a very large percentage of GDP overall, and to close down effectively the economy of the West, transfer your jobs, if you're listening to this, to third world countries. All of that is still in the treaty draft, even after all the negotiating rounds, even after the fuss that we've all made to try to, to make them rethink, and even after climate change. Well, uh, this is just devastating information. So uh, this this appears to be breaking news because uh, I've been doing searches every hour for the latest draft text. And the, the media was saying it wasn't released. There was this Danish text dealing with the uh, way the taxes would be implemented. We'll find out if that's the same text you have. That's up on the London Guardian website right now. But this is massive breaking news. They're also reporting taxes on all air travel globally, uh, taxes on all fuel globally, just a complete takeover. But this financial tax, wow. This is Alex Jones, and I want to tell you about the Ecola Blue atmospheric water generator that produces pure drinking water right from the humidity in the air. No, this isn't science fiction. It's very real. I know because I use one every day in my own home, and it's available right now to you. Because you know exactly where your water comes from with Ecola Blue, you'll know what's in your cup. Clean, great-tasting water without all the pollutants. Get your family off the grid today by ordering your own Ecola Blue atmospheric water generator for your home or business. Their best seller, the Ecola Blue 28 produces up to seven gallons of water every day. The Ecola Blue 28 is easy to use and economical. Generate your own pure water from the humidity in the air. This system is free of chemicals and uses a multi-stage filtration system, including reverse osmosis, carbon filters, and ultraviolet lights. Order now and claim your water independence today by calling Ecola Blue at 1-800-691-6043. That's 1-800-691-6043. Or visit Ecola Blue on the web at www.ecoloblu. Today. Hello, folks. This is Alex Jones, and I want to invite you to go to tpr20info.com. If you suffer from chronic or recurring pain, or if you take prescription drugs for pain, then you owe it to yourself to visit tpr20info.com and get TPR20, the effective pain relief cream without the harmful side effects of prescription drugs. I use TPR20 for arthritis in my hand, and it works great. It relieves the pain fast and fights the inflammation to keep the pain away longer. On TPR20info.com, you can read about the many uses of TPR20, like arthritis, fibromyalgia, sports injuries, back pain, sore muscles, and much, much more. Visit TPR20info.com and give yourself and those you love the gift of pain relief. Order now and get free shipping in the United States and Canada. Again, that is TPR20info.com. Or click on the TPR20 banner on InfoWars.com. That's TPR20Info.com. 
The illusion created by the power elite is a lie that covers even the food they want you to eat. Will you continue to be their profit center, buying their processed food that makes you sick? Go to the doctor and buy their drugs? You don't have to cooperate. There is a solution. Inner Health Botanicals, a company that my wife and I just love, have been providing products for the last five years that give you the perfect solution to this madness. Try their inner food with 20 organic ingredients full of dense nutrition that gives you the energy you need and will keep you well. It even won the award for best superfood of 2009 from our friend Mike Adams, the health ranger. I love their Nutri Cafe, great organic coffee infused with herbal extracts to boost your immune system. Try all of their truly honest products that will keep you alive and healthy. Go to enerfood.com or give them a call right now, 866-762-9238. Click on their banner at infowars.com to see all the available discounts. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. We have the fraudulent climate gate emails from the head UN-affiliated climate center in East Anglia. We have the fake hockey stick, the lies about the Arctic completely melting, the lies about polar bears and penguins can't swim. I'm seeing billboards all over Copenhagen saying, save the uh, polar bears, they're going to die. Complete fraud. Uh, big billboards of little girls saying, please don't let me drown. The most base, mindless, fraudulent information. Holdren saying 13-foot sea levels when the U.N. themselves says, what, 7 to 21 inches, uh, and, and that itself based on a fraud. Uh, we have uh, now uh, Lord Christopher Monckton, because he is a member of the House of Lords, went in and demanded the latest treaty. This is breaking news. It has everything that was in the previous one and worse. You're going to hear this now breaking. We have the Danish text leaked of the architecture of this global government, how private corporate interest, IMF World Bank, will run the system, not even the UN. So just uh, that's got the third world now reeling, threatening to back out. The Saudis are calling for investigations. So much is happening. I'm going to attempt to go over all of this in the next 51 minutes with Lord Christopher Monckton, again, graciously joining us. So I'm going to try to just sit back, sir, and, 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 and let you chronicle. You're there at Copenhagen. But also the good news, U.N. climate chief does say hacked emails are damaging. But as you said, they're like the cat caught with a canary in its mouth going on about its business like it's no big deal. They're trying very, very hard to pretend that climate change didn't happen. Most of the people who've come to the conference don't really know that it happened because most of the mainstream media have still really not said what's in these emails. And what is happening? is that the mainstream media have done themselves terrible damage by signing up to this climate nonsense and then by surlily refusing to admit that climate gate was happening, admit how serious it was, and simply inform their readers of what was actually in these emails. Admissions that while they're telling us, as the Met Office did just today, that today is the warmest deco decade since records began 150 years ago, privately what they're saying in the emails, the climate gate emails, is, hey, look, we've got a temperature which in fact has been falling and we can't explain why, and it's a travesty that we can't explain why. So they're saying one thing to us publicly, to maintain the scare, making them rich, and that's what's called fraud. It's criminal fraud. And on the other hand, they're saying privately, oh dear, oh dear, we can't account for the fact there's been no warming for the last 15 years. I mean, that is, it's very serious, this, this disconnect between what they're saying among themselves privately and what they're admitting to us publicly. Absolutely. Uh, talking about criminal investigations, Lord Moncton, uh, we have Senator Inhofe calling for it, the Saudis calling for investigations, and the Saudis have pointed out the United Nations, the progenitor of this fraud, they can't run the investigation. No, they can't, because the United Nations is thoroughly compromised in all this, because the climate panel that it created via the United Nations Environment Program and the World Health Organization, namely this Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which has produced four major reports on the climate. Those four major reports are now all under a cloud because all the major contributors to those reports, the lead authors, indeed the, the lead author of the entire science um, 
report of 2007 are part of these emails, part of this conspiracy to conceal, manipulate, tamper with, invent, make up, and eventually destroy data when it was requested by uh, third-party scientists who wanted to check whether the various extraordinary claims they were making could possibly be true. It's a very, very serious matter, and there's no way the UN can be allowed to do this. I think this has got to go to district attorneys in the United States, and it's got to go to the police and the Crown Prosecution Service in the United Kingdom. It's already gone to the Information Commissioner because there are plainly plain admissions in emails there over the years that they have been planning to avoid disclosing information to other scientists, which is contrary to the scientific method, as well as contrary to UK freedom of information law. But the final seal on that freedom of information thing is the email in which one of the people concerned wrote to all the others and said, you must 